please rise. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen in me, alleluia. God to deliver me, 
The first reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Exodus chapter 15. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depth, depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your mouth, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us, therefore, celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity, truth. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The third reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have, have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there. But he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, 
And she saw two angels in white sitting uh, where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor of his name. Alleluia, alleluia.
Christ is risen, hallelujah. He is risen indeed, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Christians all over the world today are rejoicing, singing and saying again their hallelujahs as they celebrate Easter. Others call the day Pascha, connecting it up with Passover, but especially with Christ our Pascha. And Paul urges us on to the feast, celebrating our exodus as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Surely that's good, salutary. But why this celebration? It's what we're all about as Christians. St. Paul tells us of the importance. I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ was raised from the dead in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to many, including to Mary Magdalene, John records in our gospel lesson. Indeed, those are the facts of the resurrection. Jesus rose, he appeared to many, they are eyewitnesses. And we might add one other, evident from the gospel, Jesus' body was not in the tomb. We dare not ignore these facts, and we cannot dismiss them as if they were mere myth. These are essential to the Christian faith to establishing the fact of Jesus' resurrection. Anyone who claims to be a Christian, yet dismisses the fact of the resurrection, is either lying or deceiving himself. He is not. We confess in the Athanasian Creed that anyone who desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is in part that we confess the Holy Trinity and worship the Holy Trinity. But it is also that we believe rightly and confess rightly about Jesus, about his incarnation, that he is at the same time both God and man and also that he suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead. This is the Catholic faith. This universal Christian creed continues. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. That is, he cannot be a Christian. On the other hand, believing faithfully and firmly in the resurrection brings everything else into focus. Jesus' incarnation into focus. His crucifixion and death into focus. Our rescue from sin and death into focus. Our hope for everlasting life into focus. Everything becomes clear in the light of the resurrection. John reports these facts in our gospel today. Mary Magdalene was the first one to the tomb on that momentous third day after Jesus' death. He had been laid in the tomb on Friday evening. He lay there all day Saturday, and on the third day, Namely, Sunday, he awakened from death's sleep. You heard Dr. Wells talk about that timing last night. That is, the living Jesus marched into the strong man's house, 
This stronger man, having defeated the devil and bound him, had come into his abode to proclaim his victory over mankind's arch enemy. And then after this, he returned to begin his resurrection appearances. Now when Mary got to the tomb, she did not peer into it. Seeing the stone rolled away, she ran to tell the disciples, and seeing Peter and John first, she told them. They ran to the tomb, and finding it just as Mary had reported, they did stoop to investigate. There they found the linen cloths that had been used to take Jesus down from the cross and wrap up his body. They were there, carefully folded up, but there was no body. And this is what John reports, that he saw and believed, but apparently not in the resurrection. As yet, they did not understand the scripture, neither Peter nor John. They did not understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. What did he believe then? Well, we can only speculate, but I suggest that he merely believed Mary's report. The two disciples returned home, but Mary lingered on at the tomb. Not that she was any better in understanding the significance of the empty tomb, but she would have an encounter that would change everything. Again, that would bring everything all into focus. She first looked into the tomb herself. But unlike Peter and John, Mary saw two angels in white. They asked her why she was weeping. And Mary showed herself to be just as dull-witted as Peter and John. They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him, she told them. But that's when she encountered the resurrected Jesus himself. He too asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? Not recognizing him, supposing him to be the gardener, she asked if he had carted off Jesus' body. Finally, Jesus revealed himself to Mary. He called her by name, and she recognized him and called him Rabboni, teacher. And surely everything changed at that moment. As soon as Mary realized that this was Jesus risen from the dead, her tears were dried, her countenance brightened, her grief turned to joy. She wants to cling to Jesus, but Jesus says, No, go tell my brothers, the disciples, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. That is, tell them, I am risen, just as I told you. Mary did. And the disciples believed. The scriptures came into focus for them too such that Peter would later preach the resurrection over and over again, using words like these penned by David, You will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. John admitted that the resurrection was what they needed for understanding. When Jesus earlier talked, about someone destroying the temple and raising it back up? They didn't understand at first. They didn't understand that Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body, about the cross. But when he was raised from the dead, John reports, 
His disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Or again, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, it was especially when Jesus was glorified by death and resurrection that they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. Brothers and sisters, Jesus' resurrection brings everything into focus for us too. Paul would later write, If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. Again, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in its own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. That Finally, the focus of Easter is also on us. It's about our resurrection and life. And that's what Jesus' resurrection gives us, assurance and hope. It's why we say with confidence, come, Lord Jesus especially as we walk through the shadowy path toward death. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. For we know that death has been swallowed up in victory. Jesus' resurrection victory. And we give thanks to God that he has given us this victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the Holy Cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, bring us by the Holy Spirit to the continual remembrance of our baptism, where all our sins may be drowned through daily repentance, and where day by day a new man may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns <clears throat> with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son and Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen, alleluia, alleluia.
fall. Happy Easter.